Hey there, this is James Fitzgerald coming from OPEX in Scottsdale. A uh, conversation that I wanted to have for uh, mainly for some coaches who wanted to take some uh, things into consideration for training around the shoulder joint. I know massive topic indeed, um, but we're gonna try to squeeze it into a specific area. Kind of look at uh, demands as to what uh, most people may be doing within fitness uh, for movements, um, more so for an intermediate level. So if uh, coaches out there are thinking in terms of designing and planning around the shoulder, here's a couple of uh, ideas you can put in the back of your head as frameworks uh, to kind of lend you into possibly looking at progression or also what kind of training you may do in a specific way. So I'm gonna lay it on in a fashion specifically for coaches. Uh, if there are athletes out there, people participating who may uh, get some insight into that, um, then I hope you can uh, enjoy the ride or see it within your training as to where uh, some things may have been missed or how some things you've been doing are creating some gains uh, for your progression around the shoulder. Uh, first thing first, uh, the, th the thing that fascinates me most in terms of uh, what goes on within the sport of CrossFit or just in uh, fitness in general around the shoulder um, has been a tremendous um, uh, um, eye-opener, let's say, and learning opportunity for me uh, coming from mainly just a strength conditioning background and ground reaction forces pretty much um, and not too much hanging activities and not too much volume in terms of what you're doing with uh, um, any kind of implements overhead or around the shoulder. Um, it was a real eye-opener in terms of the base requirements that are needed um, in terms of the movements um, and the functional movements and the functional dynamic movements um, that's required around that joint. So there's some positives to the joint. The positives around the joint uh, and this, these shoulders in general is that they move in multiple different locations. It's not the case for everyone, but uh, um, I call it like a four-dimensional joint. Um, and it has many different places that it can get into and get at, get in and out of. Um, and the goal for coaches is to basically just make sure that people have great movement relative to the preparation for their maximal potential of the function. So obviously, which goes without saying, if someone's not going to be uh, competing to ever do fatigue-based handstand push-ups, uh, you may want to think about how often we want to put them in the shoulder joint into that position if they don't have the base requirements to do it. So uh, first things first, let's just kind of take a look at you know, different kinds of angles or positions that the shoulder gets put into uh, from a list of, you know, some different kinds of uh, ideas of where it sits. Um, so some things I think about are like, you know, uh, straight arm versus bent arm movements uh, for pushing and pulling. So uh, something simple that OPEX looks at in terms of our assessment that we teach coaches is to analyze a push and a pull in an upper body um, in an upper body movement to kind of get a baseline idea as to where people sit for progression. So we'll move past the assessment and just look at exactly what's required for the joint in general and look at some different actions. So to give you an idea, so a jerk or um, a snatch balance, for example, and what's required for that straight arm overhead packing ability um, in the shoulder joint is slightly different than a strict handstand push-up and what's required for that. So the main two variations in these, which highlights, uh, which opens up a whole different area in terms of how to look at the angles and the variations around that shoulder, is to look at it in an open or a closed chain. And coaches should be thinking that we want to probably have balance in both areas. Now we could get into theoretical concepts that are fairly arguable in terms of which areas to start. Uh, my contention is that if it's done with the right intensity and skill, you can do them in both ends. So this being considered an open, open, let's just call it an open area and this being called a closed area, just basically meaning that the hand is still and the body has to work around that hand. The scapula, if you want to think of the shoulder, has to work differently than when it's in an open setting. So you can think of a number of different versions of that. Um, let's say another open session would be, you know, a dumbbell push press, okay? Another open area would be a push press. Another one would be close grip bench press. Um, let's think about a, um, ooh, this would be an interesting one, a ring dip. It's kind of a quasi middle ground one. Uh, let's look at uh, push-ups from the ground. Um, we'll look at burpees. The shoulder has to work around that, right? Um, let's look at handstand walks or handstand holds which is not generally a competitive piece, but it makes you think about the variations between a closed position and how the shoulder reacts, right? And an open position 
and you have to look at you know obviously the broad array of all those angles um, and uh, and it make it should make you think that in order for, to train around the shoulder if we know that functionally it has to be capable of moving in multiple different areas we should probably classify the training into two specific kinds and then train muscle endurance up to various different contractions with those two different kinds so now that we know that really open and closed is an area to go with for training then we can basically take what we consider you know the primary basics of um, open and close and the different versions of it and put it into a week of training and so that we're going to be able to capture the multiple different angles and the variances around that and now for starting points it's relative to the function of the client and their goals so uh, for starting places and I'll just draw out a kind of a concept or an idea as to where people should sit um, in terms of you know moving from muscle endurance before they get into more strength endurance before they get into maximal contractions um, I would ask you, ask you to do more straight arm activities so to give you an example of a straight arm uh, closed chain that would be handstand holds and a straight arm open chain would be a farmer carry okay so the shoulder has to basically create stability when the object is moving around the shoulder okay so think about moving from straight arm pieces into bent arm pieces and this is not a this is not anything outside of what has been done for multiple different weight training or gymnastics or even bodybuilding routines I'm just putting into the classification so you can think about how to train people for it and moving in this progress from this area to this area the physiological mechanisms around that is that we're going to allow basically the brain to focus on one joint or even a couple of joints moving at one time and we're getting kind of contractions to build muscle endurance okay and then when you move into a bent arm obviously bending arms is slightly more complex than straight arm activity so that's the way you want to think about it in terms of learning go from a bent arm to a straight arm activity and then work from muscle endurance this is not maximal effort muscle endurance to maximal contractions on that path so if people are beginners a whole bunch of their training if they want to train the scapula if they want to compete in CrossFit or do functional fitness should be in both open and closed chains it should be starting more so with straight arm activities and it should be muscle endurance based okay so a really simple idea of that is to do you know a1 a front leaning rest on the floor and a2 is a farmer carry okay so that's basically two different chains it's a pulling action really because in a farmer's carry I want to drop the weights to the ground so I have to keep it in place by the pulling action and the FLR I'm preventing my body from falling to the floor so it's an anti pulling position or called a pushing position and so if you want to think about a starting point for that person what you don't want to do for that beginner is push press and kipping pull-ups and even if you banded them or light weighted the push press you're still fast tracking people into more complex bent arm activities and possibly more strength endurance activities when they haven't deserved to move from muscle endurance into pure strength endurance so moving from muscle endurance into strength endurance into a, some kind of battery work and we call it battery work because it's basically your challenging strength endurance and then into maximal contractions is a good pathway to choose now there's some you know theoretical arguments on why people can fast track this in terms of principle I'll just tell you that it doesn't work for the long term and most times that the argument is made on this it comes from a population or a background of people that have been worked with only really good folks or already previously uh, strong individuals that have a lot of time under the hood and so they see progressions in folks that go from muscle endurance and you know battery and maximal contractions my contention is that when starting out for people go open and close straight arm activities muscle endurance and then you're going open close straight arm muscle endurance and strength endurance and now you're starting to move as you can see further forward from straight arm and bent arm activity and muscle endurance and strength endurance for people now you're moving them along right in their training program and then you're moving them into open close bent arm and straight arm muscle endurance strength endurance and battery activity and then over time you allow them to do maximal contractions and a maximal straight arm pulling activity could be a deadlift for example at a maximal straight arm um, activity could be a jerk um, it's not necessarily just called a shoulder activity but you can see their maximal contractions around that joint um, bent arm activities could be a maximal pull up or a close grip bench press but you can see the idea so if you if you try to fast track those proponents and forget that you need to work on both open and close throughout the week 
um, and you try to fast track that, then what you're going to find are these little niggling issues uh, that can come up. And they, they come up in multiple different ways. I'll just name a few that's common within fitness. We call it a CrossFit wrist. So be, pe people basically have like a variation in pain of one wrist to the other, um, or this outside elbow tendonitis thing that's just like a crappy little grinder that you got to kind of bunch on every day. And in most cases, any of the shit that we see in the wrist and elbows are largely coming from not having that proper rotation or scapping, you know, packing ability of our of our shoulders. Uh, we could be overusing, you know, our bigger guys and not not utilizing the nice tiny muscles. And all this can be fixed in proper progression, even for a year for someone, for example, to make it real time that wants to prepare for the opens by just training from, you know, June, July, August, September, October, November, way over here in the open and close chain, straight arm muscle endurance and strength endurance positions. Um, and then moving people closer and closer to bent arm, you know, battery activities, which is pretty much pre-opens, you know, competition, um, which you're doing like, I would say, tough jerks and you know chest to bar chin ups both bent arm and straight arm activities in different chains and battery work you know because it's closer to the competition so it doesn't matter even if it's you know uh, for someone who's in an off season who's advanced or people who are just starting in the game just think about those progressions when you're doing it so to recap, the main you know, conversation for coaches to think about or kind of ideas in your head is to have that plan of attack uh, that the beauty around you know, the variation that's required for the upper body. Um, my mentors have always told me you know, years ago as well have I seen it to be true that the upper body does respond well to a lot of variation in training. So that's a really cool component in fitness is that we can vary a lot of the movements you know, by doing, let's say for example, a maximal press one time a week. Uh, this is for people who have progressed along the chain, some kind of maximal horizontal pushing and some kind of maximal downward pushing within the week and still get somewhat of progression in terms of upper pushing over time. Of course with great base of muscle endurance and good mechanics in the shoulder and that's great because it keeps our minds at play for the upper body. Um, and we can do it obviously in multiple different pulling actions as, as well and still create that balance. And you can even possibly, you know, mix and match those on the same day. So any day you're doing vertical pushing, you could be doing vertical pulling on one day. If you're doing horizontal pushing on one day, you could do horizontal pulling. If you're going downward pushing, then you could do be upward pulling on that same day. And so now you're, at least you're creating this balance within the training program three times a week and you're, and you're doing basically variation in training, uh, which all of us love to do, okay? So uh, think about that when you're going into it, you know, understand the beauty around the variation, but also understand that if you want to have that, you know, a great shoulder for dynamic fast activities under fatigue, there has to be a big base of support that's built for that. And that's just, here's a sup, some simple frameworks that could hopefully help you as a coach or athlete think about. Um, if there's any questions, don't hesitate to contact us here at OPEX. Uh, we're willing to help because that's what we do every day is try to help coaches become better coaches and athletes become better athletes. Uh, so I hope that helped you out in terms of some thinking around what you can do for the shoulder uh, to improve your training. Take care.